Welcome back to Web Development with AngularJS and Bootstrap. In the last section, we looked at using Angular's ng repeat and filter components, which helped us in displaying data. In this section, we're going to have a look at integrating third party modules into our application. The aim of this is to leverage the open source community to improve our application without having to rewrite everything ourselves. As this is the start of the last section, I'm going to take this opportunity to encourage you to get involved in an open source project and help out. I found that this is the best way of learning about the internals of AngularJS, which can often help with some of those tricky problems you'll come across. The other reason I would encourage this is that the open source community relies on people like us who use their projects, contributing our time to better them for everyone. Alright, on to the main content now. Let's start by opening up the Angular Strap homepage. If you have had an explore around the Bootstrap docs, specifically the JavaScript page, this would look very familiar. As you can see down the left nab, this library has modals, asides, alerts, tooltips, and many other directives. All of these are Angular native directories that do what their equivalents in Bootstrap do. You'd be forgiven for thinking at this point, why would we want to duplicate what Bootstrap's components do in another library? The basic reason is that Bootstrap's components are built in jQuery, so to use them, we need to include an additional unnecessary library. The other reason is that jQuery doesn't always play well with Angular without some extra work due to Angular's binding loop. As an introduction, we'll compare the modal in Angular Strap with the version in Bootstrap. Here you can see how the modal in Angular Strap works. Now let's have a look at the version in Bootstrap. As you can see, there is not much difference in between them. If you look at the code examples of these two, you will quite quickly spot the differences, but we will come back to that in the next video. For now, we'll run through the getting started and using tooltips, which are a much simpler example to start off with. Like before, we should grab the script tags here from the quick start page and copy them into our main HTML page as shown. Next, we need to tell Angular that we want to use this module. If we jump back to the docs, we can see this module is called magcrea.ngstrap. Freeze of use, I'm just going to copy that here. Go over to our scripts, scroll up, and put it in the injection list. Alright, so we're all set up. Let's see how we can use the tooltip plugin. As you can see, there are quite a few ways of displaying a tooltip. We're going to display a tooltip on the login page's inputs when they are focused, and then display a tooltip on the submit button only when it is disabled. Right, first for the inputs, we see that here that the attribute we need to add is called BS tooltip. And its contents should either be an object with a title or a string. In this case, we are just going to use a string. We'll edit the email input first. And then I'm going to copy this down to the password field. Not forgetting to make this an actual string, not, not a series of variables. Right, next, we're going to use the data trigger attribute to make the tooltip appear only when we are focused on the input. This is similar to the example. And we copy it onto our second input as well. Right, now let's do the same for the submit button. Except this time, there are some complications. Earlier on, we set up the button to be disabled if we shouldn't be able to submit the form. 
Unfortunately, disabling a button also means that the hover and click events do not work, which means that if we just repeat what we did with the inputs, it won't work with the button. To get around this, we will wrap the button in a div element and apply the tool to it. point to be aware here is that we need to enable a display inline block styling. This gets the div to cover the exact same area as the button. We'll also use a data placement right to position it better. And then we'll use BS enabled to only show the tooltip when the form is invalid or not filled out. Okay, to finish up for this video, let's have a look at the output of our work. Right, if we focus in, we can see the inputs showing up. If we hover, it tells us to please complete all the fields. Now if we fill out some of the data, there we go. Right, that concludes this video introducing Angular Strap. In the next video, we'll start looking at a couple of more advanced directives included in Angular Strap.